Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it's me, Habibu Nisa, and having a roll number that is BP165-0072. So the topic which I'm going to discuss today is all about the calcium gluconate. So basically, what is calcium gluconate? Calcium gluconate is a mineral supplement and medication. It is used by injection and into a, vein, into a vein to treat the low blood calcium, higher blood potassium and magnesium toxicity. And supplementation is uh, like generally only required when there is not enough calcium in the diet. So basically, the, what is the rational use of it is, it is used to treat the condition like arising because of the deficiencies of the calcium. And that may be the hypocalcemic tetanine, that is hypoglycemic tetanine uh, related to the hypoparathyroidism and hypocalcemia due to the rapid growth or pregnancy. So calcium gluconate may add in uh, antagonizing the cardiotoxicity. So mean that it is causing the cardiotoxicity provided the patient is not receiving the digitalis therapy. So irrational use is the inotropic, irrational mean use at what's the side effect is, uh, it's gonna cause. So inotropic and toxic effect of cardioglycosides and calcium are both, if we are taking both of them synergistically uh, and uh, uh, our calcium are synergistic and arrhythmias may occur. Okay, and if these drugs are given it together, that is particularly when we calcium is given intravenously, that is IV, intravenous administration of calcium should be avoided in a patient receiving the cardiac glycoside. So if necessary, calcium should be given slowly in a small amount. Yeah, like for example, like it's mean that we're gonna give it in a very little amount. Further is alternative choices with the reason. So uh, it's mean that if we are, a sh if we're having a shortage of the calcium gluconate, so what we're gonna do next. So if you are having, you are short of the uh, on a calcium gluconate, you can substitute the calcium chloride, but use one third of the dose. And remember that when administering calcium chloride, it is advisable to either use central assist or using a peripheral line, use a larger catheter in a more proximal site and ensure that the line function as well prior to the administration. This is all the indication, all the, uh, the like all this uh, indication, all the procedure, all the step which is given while administrating it in the, uh, on the, in the patient. So if hyperkalemia is there, sodium bicarbonate can be used. Okay, now come to the dosage. Dosage means like how much of the amount we are, uh, we are uh, bound to give to the patient. Okay, calcium uh, gluconate should be administered IV, either directly or by infusion. Like you can give it directly to the patient or you just give it to the, in the form of the infusion, like a little, little, or like it is, it, it could be the intermittent infusion, it could be the continuous infusion. The dose is dependent upon the individual requirement of the patient. It is already, uh, already mentioned in all the pharmacopias and all the books that whenever we're gonna administer any dose to the patient, it should be, and it should have to be depend upon the the patient uh, individual requirement that could be according to his BMI, according to his uh, his like his physical condition, and according to his um, like his condition of the um, of the disease or so which is uh, probably given in the uh, which is probably given by the patient himself. So calcium gluconate may also be administered by intermittent infusion at a rate not exceeding 200 m mg per minute or by continuous infusion. It means that we can give it. Uh, by two ways that could be intermittent infusion uh, by continuous infusion and it could be given in either directly so uh, the all the doses which have to be given for the adults should be 500 mg to 2 gram for children it should be 200 to 500 milligram for infants not more than 200 milligram okay so the side effects rapid in, in rapid intravenous in injection of a calcium salt may cause vasodilation decrease blood pressure bradycardia that that bradycardia means the, the slowness of the like the uh, of the heart rate cardiac arrhythmia the synocope and cardiac arrest so this is these all are very serious condition so it's really important to give it in the in the in the dose that is prescribed use in digitalized patient may precipitate arrhythmias so local necrosis and abscess formation may occur with the intramuscular injection so if we are taking it intravenously uh, sorry intra uh, im injection that it could causes the necrosis so brands available the brands we are available is calvicon calvicon that is sachet of 250 mg 
by uh, next is by uh, that is by Helicon Pharma Pharmaceutic Pakistan PBT Limited that is having a rupees of eighty point five zero. So calcium gluconate injection one gram fifty approx uh, approximately ten ml marketed by marketed by that is Wuhan Grand Pharmaceutical Group, uh, Co Limited China. So, the, so further now we move towards the case studies. Charlie is the 40 year old man who is feeling extremely weak and tired. His medical history uh, shows that he is having a diabetes mellitus, which is a very serious condition for which he is taking the medication. Like uh, he is taking metformin, acetylcyclic acid, free gabalin for diabetes and diuretic to decrease the blood pressure. So current laboratory values are given for the sodium, for the chloride, for the for, for the glucose, for the calcium, and for magnesium, albumin, and potassium, everything is written here. Which electrolytes should be included in the Charlie parental nutrition or nutrient formulation? So it's all depend upon the condition of his current laboratory uses. So what would be the infusion rate then? And what we gonna put the, either it should be intermittent or either it should be continuous. So subjective, that is soap notes is subjective, objective, assessment and then plan so subjective is charlie is uh, charlie's is 40 years old man feeling extremely weak and tired is his chief complaint is extremely weak and tired okay and his characterization is acute like it's not that much uh, a chronic condition so his uh, history is he is having a medical history of diabetes mellitus and for which he is uh, probably must taking some kind of medication so current medication, take metformin, acetylsalicylic acid, pregabalin, and diuretic for the diabetes. So soap note is objective, vital signs. Uh, BP is 130 by 80 mmHg. His heart rate is 65 beats per minute. His temperature is 98.7 Fahrenheit. Respiratory rate is 16 per minute. And physical exam is uh, ex the tiredness and weakness. So his lab test is showing all these uh, all these values for his sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, creatinine level, his uh, his potassium, his albumin. Everything everything is uh, is showing in the lab test, and assessment is like he has been he has been taking a diuretic because of which he suffers from electrolyte loss. All of the loss is just because of taking the di diuretics and uh, which causes the electrolyte loss and bradycardia that is the slowness of the heart heart rate so electrolytes added are sodium potassium chlo potassium chloride acetate which is metabolized to bicarbonate magnesium calcium phosphate electrolytes should be added to the parental nutrient formulation based on the individual patient's need however patient without a significant fluid and electrolyte loss hepatic or renal dysfunction or acid based disturbance do well with maintenance dose of electrolyte now what's the plan Calcium and phosphate should not be added to the parental nutrient formulation in a closed sequence. It is recommended to add phosphate first and then calcium last. Parental nutrient formulation containing hypertonic extrol is to begin at a slow infusion rate that is of less than 150 gram for patient with, with a known diabetes mellitus. For example, like if he's having a diabetes mellitus, it should be less than 150 gram or hyperglycemia. The infusion is increased slowly over the next 24 to 48 hours. Like it means that first we're going to give it in a very slow rate. And then, for, then after time, we have to increase the infusion. And the goal should uh, to uh, to get the goal infusion rate. The, this initial period allow the clinician clean a clinician to access the patient ability to tolerate. Like it's showing, it will uh, show that how much he is tolerant to the nutrient formulation or the infusion which we are giving. So to tolerate the nutrient formulation component and to avoid the metabolic complication because every uh, infusion may causes some kind of uh, uh, metabolic complication or uh, show tolerancy rate should be uh, should be known for the for the nurse or whoever is taking care of the patient so primarily hyperglycemia if the serum glucose level remain 150, uh, less than 750 the parental nutrient formulation infusion rate can be used to his goal rate of 75 ml per hour so what's the drug interaction Severe interaction of calcium gluconate includes the ceftriaxone. Serious interaction of calcium gluconate includes the, all the drug which is given, that is the demilocycline, minocycline, oxy, tetracycline, tetracycline, lamicycline, loxycycline, 
and because it can make insoluble complexes all the drugs which are given previously is all are making a complexes that is end with antibiotic and those complexes may cause a serious complication including the that could be kidney failure vascular complication etc so what is the antidote the calcium gluconate extravasation is a process that can cause a serious lesions such as necrosis and calcification of the soft tissue so sodium thiosulfate can hyaluronidase prevent the development of calcium deposit after calcium gluconate extravasation so if the extravasation can happen you can give th sodium thiosulfate so jazakallah thank you so much